Today we're going to be working with thirds, which uh, I have to admit, when I first learned uh, math in high school and in uh, primary school, we never called them thirds. I always heard them called radicals or square roots. But so what I mean by that is just something like um, let's see here, an example of that could be like square root of four. What this means is square root. It's basically saying what number times itself twice will give you four. In other words, there is a number that if I multiply it by itself twice, I'll get four. It turns out it's two, because two times two equals four. Okay, so that's kind of the definition of a square root. It's like saying a little two here. Like before when I was doing a series of videos uh, showing you about um, how to work with exponents, turns out this is like a little stealth two here. It tells you that what number has to be squared uh, by itself, oh, sorry, what mu number multiplied by itself twice gives you four. Turns out two. We can do another example. Let's say I take the square root of 16. So we call it square root. It's because there's actually a little stealth two sitting here. So that means what number times itself twice gives you 16. Turns out the number four works, right? Because four times four gives you 16. Now I'm gonna take away these little squares because they can become really distracting here. So these little twos right here, at least, those are not important. But basically, there's, there's some numbers here that have really nice square roots. When I say nice, I mean they give you integer values, numbers that aren't decimals. So for example, we take the square root of 25. Well, that's going to be 5. And we can keep going. I mean, square root of 144, for example, is a nice one. Turns out it's 12. Right? That's because 5 times 5 is 25. 12 times 12 is 144. 4 times 4 is 16. 2 times 2 is 4. And so on. So when I'm talking about square roots or radicals or thirds, I just mean these things with a square root symbol. Now oftentimes it happens where the square root isn't giving you something nice. In other words, sometimes it doesn't work out to be something so simple as 4 or 16 or 25 or 144. What if this number is like square root of 5? That doesn't work out easily at all. If you try it on a calculator, for example, square root of 5 gives you some decimal. So square root of 5. And I can say that gives me, well, some decimal. So we need to have some other way of working with square roots. Turns out we have lots of ways. So I'll give you a few tricks here. One of the tricks is um, working with combination. So what I mean by that is what if I have a square root of two numbers multiplied by each other? Now these numbers, again, I'm writing this in general. So they could be A and B. They could be anything, really. A could be any number. B can be any number. And I'm writing letters here because I'm using algebra. So in this case, what if I want to multiply a and b and then take the square root of it? It turns out it's the same thing as splitting them up. In other words, square root of a times square root of b is the same thing as square root of ab. These are equivalent. They're the same. You can go backwards and forwards, so to speak. So a quick example of that. Let's say I have, oops, maybe I actually want to move everything down a little bit. Again, I love computers because you can just drag things and fix. So let's say I want an example of this. I could take, for example, the, let's see here, it's black. So I can work backwards. Instead of going from left to right, let's go from right to left. Maybe square root of two times square root of five, let's say. So square root of two times square root of five is the same thing as taking square root of, remember, a times b. So two times five, which is 10. So that's the same thing. Now it's really important to reduce your uh, radicals, so to speak. So here's another really important thing. Um, always reduce or simplify. So I'll show you an example. See, what I'm doing here is I'm going to be looking for, can 10 be split up anymore into something like this? Well, yes, 10, root 10 can be split up into root 2, root 5. A lot of times we just say root instead of square root, it's implied. So if I want to split up square root of 10, the square root of 2, square root of 5, this didn't really make it any easier, did it? So in other words, this is reduced or simplified. But what if I have an example like, uh, oops, let's say I have something like, Square root of 8. Turns out that can be simplified. Watch carefully. I can take square root of 8 and I can, I can uh, split it up into two numbers where one of them will give me something kind of special. 
So I can split up square root of 8 into square root of 2, square root of 4. However, the square root of 4 is something easy. Remember what we wrote here? Square root of 4 is one of these what we call perfect squares. Square root of 4 is a nice number. It's just number 2. So square root of 4 is the same thing as just 2. In other words, instead of square root of 4, I write down the number 2. Now it still has to be glued in front of this square root of 2, so it becomes what we say 2 root 2. It turns out the square root of 8 should often be written as this form. And one might think, well, this isn't any simpler. This is way more complicated. But later on, if you're trying to compare complicated looking square roots, oftentimes this is the key to doing it. This is the key to making things actually much easier later on. I'll give you one more little trick here. So what if we have the square root of, so just like we had square root of a times b, we can have the square root of a over b. And it turns out that's the same thing as taking square root of a divided by square root of b. So it's the same sort of idea here. We can split them up. So an example could be, let me just show you one here. So what if I take, oops, maybe I want to move this down a little bit more. So what if I take an example like, uh, here I'll make it a little bit more complicated. I'll make one where we can do it two different ways. So square root of 12 divided by square root of 3. Well, I could, I could just use this trick here. So if I want to figure out what square root of 12 is over square root of 3, I, mean, I could use it on my calculator, but I don't want to use the calculator. I want to do it myself. So I can use this trick. I can say it's the same thing as, I'm going to work backwards, so square root of 12 over square root of 3 is the same thing as the square root of 12 over 3. So I'll put it all in a big square root here because, I mean, now I can deal with 12 divided by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay, so square root of 4. Remember, square root of 4 is a nice, easy number. This is a perfect square. There is a number that when you multiply it by itself twice, you get 4. Remember, it's 2. Now, I didn't have to use this trick. It turns out I could have used this reduce or simplify trick. I just want to show you an extra way of kind of doing it. Okay, so I'll do it kind of off to the side. I could have also seen square root of 12 divided by square root of 3. I could have started by simplifying the square root of 12. Okay, so I'm going to leave the square root of 3 on the bottom. I'm not going to use this trick at all. I'm just going to reduce square root of 12. I can make it, I mean, I could make it square root of 2 times square root of 6 if I wanted. But the problem is, this isn't a nice square root, so to speak. Neither is this. Neither of these give me an easy number. These will be decimals. I probably don't want to break up 12 into 2 and 6. That's not going to help. But what if I broke up the 12 into something else? Maybe you're thinking of it that, what if I make it square root of 4 times square root of 3? That's the same, because 4 times 3 is also 12. Now what's square root of 4? Square root of 4 is a nice, perfect square. We've been using it a few times. It's just number 2. See, no square roots in front of it now. So just 2 is the same thing as square root of 4. I still got to keep the square root of 3 divided by square root of 3. And a nice easy trick. Square root of 3 divided by square root of 3 cancels out, and I get an answer of 2. Ta-da! See, it works. It's the same. So see, knowing how to use your square roots backwards and forwards sometimes can help you to solve tricks, even if you forgot this trick. You can still just work on it and get it yourself. That's the beauty of mathematics is that a lot of times there's more than one way of getting the answer. Keep in mind, I'm showing you a way to get the answer. Very often, there is more than one way. Okay, so don't get too limited by just saying, oh, well, he didn't show us that way, because there's lots of ways of doing things. This is merely one of the ways of doing it.